Hello, BookTube. Recently on his channel, David Wiley has created a series of videos called Bookshelf Essentials, where he looks at his bookcases and he looks at the variety of books that we all look at, right? You look at a bookcase and you're thinking, eh, yeah, didn't really like that. Don't have any way to get rid of it. Eh, that was a gift. Uh, I remember that. I kind of sort of like that. Don't remember it all that well. And when your eyes are passing over a bookcase, usually you w some books will glow. They will, they will jump out. It will be, ooh, I not only remember this book, I love it. I can't do without it. That's what he refers to as his bookshelf essentials. And I love the idea. It's got a very appealing simplicity to it. I uh, have that experience. Of course, all readers have that experience. I enshrine mine. By, I have made a room for them. <laughs> this particular room is full of those books. And those books are in this room. There are lots of books elsewhere at Hyde Cottage, but they're not that. If a book has that kind of feeling, if it feels essential, it comes in here. Even though that makes for space issues. There are no space issues in here at the moment. <laughs> there are huge open spaces in here at the moment. But that won't be true forever. Uh, the goal, of course, I think for all of us is to find bookshelf essentials and nothing else. I, I, maybe not all of us, but certainly for me, the goal is to, for my library to be only essentials. Uh, but there are lots of other books here, and they fulfill various roles. I, I like them. I like having them. Occasionally, I like revisiting them. Sometimes I tell myself that I will use them for research. Although, I have to note, in 2023, I don't think that happened even once. I had plenty of research to do in 2023, plenty of things to look up and check. I did it all digitally, either searching the digital books that I have or looking around online for digital resources. I don't think I ever got up and pulled a book off the shelf for utilitarian reasons. Many, many is the time I got up and pulled a book off the shelf for pleasure. Only in here. I didn't do that to any of the books elsewhere in Hyde Cottage. Uh, so I guess this room is my essentials. And I want to keep doing bookshelf essentials for the rest of the, for the next two weeks in December. Uh, because I love the idea. Uh, I'm not the only one. I think a couple of other booktube... I know Michael K. Vaughn has done a couple of these. And a couple of other booktube channels I think have as well. I encourage everybody to do it. Show us a book to help essential and talk about it a little. Uh, and I have one today from 1994. Uh, it's this big heavy thing. The Art of the Personal Essay. Edited by Philip Lopate. And I chose to get a big hardcover with uh, deckled edges. Purely for its durability. I've had the trade paperback of this. Uh, Anchor Books makes a very nice trade paperback of this, but it's just not strong enough. And the reason it needs to be strong is because I revisit this a lot. This is a uh, an essay anthology stretching from the ancient times, from Lao Tzu and Seneca and whatnot, all the way to the 1990s. Uh, and it's the personal essay rather than the informational essay, the, inform the impersonal essay, the... Uh, somebody writing a long essay on the mating habits of bees or irregular Greek verbs, those aren't going to be in here. These are very much I and me. These are very much... Uh, the, the author of the essay is very much present in the work. And there's nothing wrong with that. That can be raised to a wonderful art form, as any of you who've read you know, Emerson or Thoreau will know perfectly well. That can be done really, really well. And... Uh, it is done really, really well in this volume. This is, I have, there are a number of other essay volumes in this room, I'm pretty sure. A number of anthologies just in general in this room. And uh, when it comes to anthologies, there are two ways to go about things. I've talked about this before. There's a very pro programmatic, you know, you show up and punch a time clock way to do an anthology where you tell your editorial assistants, yeah, the publishers, publisher wants this. Uh, anthology of naval writing look we want they want it out by the christmas season they think it's going to do well go and find me what's available who are we going to have in here you got to have conrad you got to have melville that sort of thing the anthologies do well people readers like them and they always have oh my god anthologies especially anthologies of essays were some of the earliest bestsellers in the print era uh, so that's centuries old and as a result there'll always be a need for them and some of them get made that way uh, and then there's the other kind, where it's the editor is living and breathing it, where the editor loves the work and wants you to love it too, where they want to make something special. Now, I don't know anything personally about the origin of the art of the personal essay, I, and I don't know Philip Lope. I have had the chance to review, not this book, I was not reviewing books when this came out, but uh, he's done a later trilogy uh, of essay anthologies that are wonderful. 
absolutely wonderful. They've come out in the last 10 years. And I've, I've reviewed a couple of those to my great pleasure. But I don't know anything about the origin story of this work or of this editor, but this definitely feels like the second kind of anthology. It feels imbued with love. And that is wonderful. Whether it's an essay anthology or a short story anthology or a poetry anthology, no matter what it is, I love anthologies that feel that way. And I go through a lot of anthologies, always looking for that and discarding the ones that don't feel that way. Uh, and that's why I go back to this a lot, because this really feels that way. It really does feel just imbued with I care about all. It feels like Philip Lopate's personal favorites. Uh, which causes problems with one selection <laughs> on a table of contents, which I'll, which I'll get to. Uh, of course, the first thing you're going to encounter if you read this thing like a book, and some of you are like that, you will not skip around even in an anthology. You have to go from page one to the end. The first thing you'll encounter will be the editor's introduction, <laughs> which is a bane of a lot of people's existence. Not this particular introduction, but just the need for that. I don't know how many of you have ever had the, the job of generating occasional prose uh, where look you the anthology is almost done we've got these pages open for the editor's introduction you need to write it Wh whatever it is whether it's that or maybe you've got a, a library newsletter and you've got a certain amount of space that you, that you have to fill for director's comments or something like that or uh the introduction to some sort of uh committee report where you've just got to write it and it's 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 just so long and you can't skip it there's got to be that that's got to be there for you uh, I've had to do a couple of those in my life, and uh, they suck the soul right out of you. <laughs> they really do. In an anthology like this, that I think is personally driven, the most honest version of that introduction is always just going to be the, in, the editor saying, oh, I, here's why I love this. Oh my God, I love this. Here's why I included this. Oh, my favorite part of this is this. And that's not typically the introduction that any editor is going to write. Instead, they're going to do, unfortunately, what Philip Lopate does here, which is to, uh, to ponder what is the essay? What, what is the essay? What do, what do we mean when we say the essay? <laughs> I, I always smile a little when I read those things because uh, literary types tend to overcomplicate these things. <laughs> An essay is a prose meditation of moderate length about some aspect of existence or the writer's personal life. Period. Full stop. In and out. Nobody gets hurt. That's it. A prose meditation of a certain length about some aspect of existence or the author's personal life. <laughs> That's it. Uh, so that tells you what it is, and that also tells you what it isn't. Uh, a prose, uh, an essay has to be prose. It can't be poetry. It can't be fiction. Fiction can't be an essay. Poetry can't be an essay. It, it is its own thing. It's not anything else. I know that that's completely uh, verboten, unfashionable to the limited extent that those two things are different right now in the 21st century. In the 21st century, it's completely forbidden to say that things have definitions. Instead, the, de the definition is your personal identity and your insistence on gaslighting. The, 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 the asymptotic meeting of those two axes is what a definition is. So I have put a bathtub, I found a bathtub at the junkyard, I put it on the back of a truck, I hauled it to my backyard, I've half buried it in the dirt, and I've planted flowers in it. And I walk you out along the path in the backyard, and I point you to it, and we talk a little about how when it's springtime, maybe it will be very pretty when the flowers come into bloom. And then you turn to me and you say, that half-submerged used bathtub in the dirt is an essay. Uh, in the 21st century, you would be quietly committed for psychiatric care, if you did that. In, in, or in the 20th century. In the 21st century, if I turn to you and say, no, it's not. It's a half-submerged bathtub in the dirt. Uh, you will work hard with all of your online friends to make sure that I lose my job, that I lose any kind of uh, social standing, that I never work again. You, you, it doesn't matter whether or not it is what it is. It matters that you're going to declare what it is. The words are reality in the 21st century is, I guess, the short term here. I think most parts of normal society are heartily sick of that kind of mental illness. But nevertheless, it's very unfashionable for someone to simply define an essay. But nevertheless, my definition is true. Any definition along those lines is true. Anything that isn't an essay is not an essay. 
And an essay is not any of the things that aren't essays. <laughs> Fortunately, this was done in 1994. Uh, so before the end of the last sane century. And so it, it, there's nothing in here that isn't an essay. And the stuff that's in here is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. This table of contents is put together with such love and such care. The variety of voices here from, from millennia ago to the present, the present day of the 90s is wonderful. I think that's why I keep going back to this, because it does not feel like more of the same. Not at all. Uh, John Degada also did a trilogy of essay collections in, I think, the late 20th century. They were far more, th those books were far more uh, idiosyncratic, far less conventional than the picks in here. Still a lot of really interesting stuff in there, but also those volumes, unfortunately, were full of things that aren't essays. Uh, this is not. The only trouble that I have with the table of contents here, as I alluded to a little bit earlier, is that Philip Lopate commits the sin number one, in my mind, for any anthologist, for any editor collecting an anthology, and that is to anthologize his own work. You should never do that. <laughs> never, never do that. Unless you are overruled by co-editors. But Philip, this was Philip Lopate's show. He doesn't have any co-editors. Unless you are overruled by co-editors, then you don't put your own work in an anthology. That's for somebody else to do. That's for somebody, somebody else making an anthology to look at your work and say, that's so good, I need to include it. If you say, that's so good, I need to include it, you, <laughs> you hit all the wrong notes, even when the piece you're including is as brilliant as the piece of his own that Philip Lopate includes in this volume, an essay called Against Joie de Vie, that is amazing. It definitely deserves to be anthologized, but not in your own anthology. <laughs> not in your own anthology. No. <laughs> but aside from that one lapse, oh my, there are so many great things in here. All of the, of the names that you would expect, uh, Montaigne is in here a few times, Virginia Woolf, uh, C.K. Chesterton, Charles Lamb, William Hazlitt, uh, Robert Louis Stevenson, but lots of others, lots of others that you wouldn't expect, uh, including quite a few non-Western writers, which is really great, since the, the essay, in the form that we would recognize, it started in Eastern countries long before it started in Western countries, long, long before. So here we have, uh, let's see here, Hlu Sun, this too is life, and death, those two, those two essays. We have Tanizaki in Praise of Shadows. Uh, there are earlier examples of that as well. Uh, let me see here. Uh, yes, Kenko, Essays in Idleness. There's a selection from Essays in Idleness. Essays in Idleness is wonderful, just this whole collection. But uh, Sei Shonagon is in here as well. Yes, Sei Shonagon is in here. Uh, Hateful Things is her little essay, which will just be prized out of her longer work. Uh, but one of the things... Uh, that I really like about this anthology is you've got the table of contents, right? Where it, the book is moving forward chronologically and the table of contents moves forward with it too. So you're moving forward chronologically in the table of contents. But then when you're done, uh, before you get to the book, before you get to that, to that essay, the opening essay, the introductory essay that every anthology editor has to do, <laughs> no matter how much they dread it, before you get to that, you get another table of contents, this time by theme. <laughs> so you've got all sorts of themes here, and the page numbers bounce all over the place. The same essays, they're just, all of a sudden, they're arranged in different ways. Isn't that wonderful? So if you're in the mood, maybe you would be, if you're in the mood to, to pull down a volume like this and just read the essays on death, you know just where to find them. If you haven't read and don't know everything in here, I have been through this thing a million times, and I will, I will continue to. The juxtaposition of these things is wonderful, especially when you go by theme instead of chronologically. When you do it chronologically, you sort of know what's happening, you know what's coming. But when you go by theme, oh no, then it, it shakes up the whole book. Uh, which makes it infinitely revisitable. Even though I know a lot of what's in here, I, some of the essays, uh, two or three of the essays in here, on hating, in particular, and stuff like that. Two, two or three of the essays in here I know virtually word for word. I still go back to them in this volume. So it's a, a letter of praise to a well-done introduction. What a shadow this thing cast. 
when Lope did his three modern anthologies, his, his three newer anthologies of essays, they are not modern in terms of table of contents. There are quite a few of them are historical, but what a shadow to work under. Pretty much the only person who wouldn't be intimidated to work under the shadow of Philip Lope's The Art of the Personal Essay is Philip Lope himself. So I'm glad he did those three essay things. Uh, but this came first. And this captured my my uh, my heart first. So this is definitely a bookshelf essential. At the moment, I'm not sure that I have all three of those later, those 21st century essay collection anthologies. I have one of them, I think. I'm not sure that I have all three of them, but I'll always be sure that I have this. Uh, so I wanted that. I wanted to uh, to include that for my uh, my bookshelf essentials. This is this is well worth having. And if you are gentler on your books. Uh, than I am, <laughs> then the lovely paperback will do you just fine. It's it's a really solid paperback. It's just not solid enough for me. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's my bookshelf and uh, essentials for today. I think this is number four for me. I'll do a couple more of these. These are a lot of fun. Just pull down a book and talk about it. Uh, but I'll wrap this one up for now, uh, and I'll see you soon. Thank you, book two.